Hey guys, how's it going? Um, Scott Devine here from scottsbasslessons.com. Um, apologies that there's no fancy lights today. I just thought it'd be cool to do another one of these bootleg type things. And we did one last week when Denmark was out. DMAC, or Denmark, is the guy that normally does all the fancy lights and cameras, but he's um, doing something today, so he's not around. Um, so I thought it'd be a cool thing to just throw another one of these things out today, like boot, boot gorilla style lessons. And, and one of the... Um, one of the things I get asked for over and over again is tips on flying with your bass. So I've put some cool tips together just to help you guys out. So tip number one is actually nothing to do with bass playing. I'm just going to make sure that this is recording. Um, tip number one is nothing to do with bass playing. It's actually to do with buying your tickets because obviously to you know go flying, um, you need to buy some tickets. And I have um, flown all around the world and bought a whole load of tickets and um, taking my bass with me. So... I'm experienced in this stuff. Um, so the first one is buying your tickets. Make sure that you have your browser in incognito mode if you're buying your tickets online. The airlines track your cookies on your computer. And as you search around the internet, you'll see that the price of the airlines keep going up. Okay, now this is super evil airline marketing techniques where they're adding scarcity as you keep searching they're tracking your cookies and the price of those, those flights are going to keep going up. So that's why if you've had it before, you know, your partner shouts through, hey, um, oh, the, the prices are going up, we should book now, we should book now. It's because they're tracking your cookies. So put, you know, it works in Chrome or Safari or all these browsers generally have incognito modes that you can, it's like a plug-in that you can download into your browser, search online and before you buy your next ticket, Make sure you're going incognito. Um, great band, by the way. Um, so that's the first, the first tip. The second tip, I've written them down here. I can never remember this stuff. The second one is prepare your bass. So when you're taking your bass, what I like to do is loosen off the strings because if it's going in the hold, and we're going to be talking about whether you should be taking hard cases or soft cases in a few minutes, if it's going in the hold, um, it's going to be super cold in there, so I like to, you know, just loosen off the strings in the case. Now, talking about cases, um, I want to talk about packing your case, and this is tip number three. So tip number three is, if you're taking a hard case, okay, let me just, let me just pull this down so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you're taking a hard case, what you'll find is, the bass will move around like that and that is bad because if you're you know if you've been on flights before you'll have seen those evil you know the, the, how evil they are when they when they're, when they're handling your luggage and they'll be thrown around your case so you don't want your case to be moving around like this so what I do is I just get a bunch of socks and tops and things like that and put some of that in the case so around here and what the 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 uh, the, the points that you want to lack of a better term, the points that you want to focus on is the top of the headstock and the butt of the base because that's where it's going to move okay so socks and things around here and then a couple of socks down by the bottom um, of the base as well because a lot of the time they'll drop it on the end of the case and I've seen things like I've seen like the, the cracks down the headstock down here and I've also seen it where the the jack pin here is that what it's called not a jack pin the uh, the strap pin has been pushed into the actual body of the base because of the, as they've dropped the case it's banged like that and it, you want to pack it out whatever case you're using so pack your case out the next sort of like case tip is if you're taking a hard case like this and it's got a lock on it don't lock the case because, and I learned this the hard way, if it's going in the hold and they want to look in there for security reasons, they do sort of like random security checks, um, and you've locked it, they will pop it open with a screwdriver and it will break the actual lock of the case. So even though you'll want to lock it and keep from people going in there, don't do it. The best thing to do is use duct tape or gaffer tape. And, and what I like to do is do... Um, a few rolls around here, a few rolls around here, and a few rolls around. So like three times around. So it's not going to pop open, you know. It's definitely not going to pop open. But if they want to get in there, it, it makes it easier for the attendants to go in there and check that, you know, you're not taking on anything you shouldn't. I don't know what number I'm on now, but I'm just going to go back to my list. The next thing is don't check it in at the check-in gate. Do you know where you, you put your luggage in? 
Don't give them the base there. I, um, I've, I've been flying around the world doing gigs for nearly 20 years now. And out of all those 20 years, I've only had to put it in one time down that, you know, the evil conveyor belt where everybody's, you know, everybody's grandma's huge 20 stone case is going down. It's probably going to land on top of your ca- on, on top of your base. So don't check it in there. It's cool for them to tag it and things like that and weigh it. But, you know, don't let them take it there. You just have to say to the, the, uh, the attendant that's working there, I don't mind checking it into the hold or anything like that, but I really want to um, check it in at the gate. Check it in at the gate. So just explain, you know, it's, really, it's a really fragile instrument, it's, you know, worth a lot of money. You don't want to check it in and send it down with grandma's 20 stone case. Um, you want to take it to the gate and you'll check it in there. It's a good thing to do, guys. So the next thing is at the gate. So when you get to the gate, so this is for the gig bag guys. And again, I'll talk about whether you should be taking a gig bag or a hard case in a minute. But for those that are taking a gig bag, okay, when you get to the gate, if you, if you have taken a gig bag, you're going to want to try and take it on the plane with you. So if you do, I want you to flip it upside down. Flip it upside down like this. Because it looks way less inconspicuous. A lot of the time it's up to the, the girl or the guy who's working on the gate, it's up to their discretion whether you're going to be able to take on or not. It looks way less inconspicuous if you have it like this. It just looks like a large rucksack and the neck is going down below your bum. Okay, so upside down like that and then piece of cake, you should be able to walk on with it. Okay, so just check that out. Then the next tip is, especially if you're trying to get your If you're trying to get your gig bag on board with you, try and get on early. Try and be one of the first on the plane. Okay, so sometimes this is hard. The the, the airline police are coming for me. Um, Sometimes it's hard to get on early. I understand that. But really try and get on um, early onto the plane. Priority boarding really helps. In the UK, I think it's £20, so $30 for priority boarding. I always try and get it because it just seems to help, you know. Um, when it gets to, when it comes to getting the actual gig bag on board. Now the next thing is the case. What should you do about you know should you take a hard case or should you take a soft case? So in my opinion and and what I've learned is that I don't want the stress of trying to get a, a gig bag on board the plane because sometimes it's a lot easier with guitars, but with basses um, sometimes they can be a bit iffy about you because it's a little bit longer than a guitar and like a lot of the time it does fit in the overhead things but as I said it's up to the the attendant that's working on the gate sometimes it's up to their discretion and sometimes they will just say you know we're gonna have to check that in it's gonna have to go in the hold so in that and that is why generally I take a case with me this is a Hiscox case they're really they're really good and super solid I'm not affiliated with them at all. There's no point, you know, I'm not getting anything about sort of like telling them, telling you to check these out. But Hiscox cases are really good. Again, like I've used Hiscox cases and I've been waiting at the other end for them to come out and they've come out with big chunks out of them. So it's really worth getting a a good case um, if it's going to go in the hold. So check out Hiscox cases. Um, The best ones and the the best thing to do especially for if you're gigging wherever you're going and you're going to be having to like go to different gigs and walk around, is the SKB Base Safe. They're really good. Essentially, it's like a shell that you put your gig bag inside. So you put it inside the actual shell of the SKB Base Safe and it keeps it nice and, nice and secure. And then when you get to your hotel, where you're traveling to, you just open up the Base Safe and you take out your gig bag, put it on your shoulder, And then you're ready to go to the gig or where a sound check, whatever you're doing. It's worth also worth noting that in the UK, and I'm I'm not sure if you guys have this over in the States, but in the UK, there is something such as the Musicians Union. They give you a a bit of a card paper to take to you with the airline and say, hey, you know, it's this is the law. I'm allowed to take my bass or guitar or whatever on the flight with me which is fantastic when you're flying from the UK to another country or wherever your musician union is flying from your country to you know to wherever now the problem is guys when you're coming back 
a lot of the people, they don't give a crap about the musicians' union. So for me, I was in, I flew to Barcelona just last year, I think, and I took it in a gig bag, had my little card. You know, they were like, yes, you can take it on board. And when I was flying back, I like, showed them the card in Barcelona. They were just like, yeah, whatever, guy, whatever, you know, get it in the, get it in the hold. And I had to put it in the hold in a, in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a gig bag. So obviously, um, nasty things can happen when you put a, a guitar or a bass in the hold in a gig bag. In fact, I had a, a friend who had a, a beautiful Selma Mark VI sax, like really old, super sexy and the same thing happened to him. Imagine the size of a sax as well. The sa- sax case is like super small compared with the bass case. He got to the gate. They said, you've got to put it in the hold. He had to he put it in the hold. And when he got to the other end and it came out, it came out in a million bits, essentially. It was, it was completely smashed to bits. So it's really worth bearing in mind that um, if you are taking your gig bag on to the plane with you, you are taking it on. You know, there is a risk, an element of risk to it. I have done it in the past, but me personally, I really like taking a hard case. But again, I will not check it in at the at the luggage check-in. I'll get it tagged up there and things like that, but then I'll take it to, to the gate and make sure they take it there. And just a little extra tip on top of all these tips. If you're taking your, do you know when you put the base on upside down and things like that? If they've tagged it up to go in the in the hold you can kind of sometimes tuck it behind you and they will assume that you've been told that you can take it on the plane so that's just another tip to uh, to help you get that base on the plane again it's super scary stuff guys but if you really um, organize with what you do it's fine just get a good case and and you'll be good to go so if you haven't checked out scott's bass lessons today um yet not today if you haven't checked out scottsbasslessons.com yet go over there's some cool stuff for you to download there's free lessons there's a podcast um, all the video is super sexy, not like this old school. This is old school, right? Like I started five years ago. Was it five years ago? I think it was five years ago. Anyway, guys, thank you for all the support as, as always. And as always, I'll see you in the shed. Bye.